Antifa, short for anti-fascist. It's an umbrella term for a group that shows up at protests to confront neo-Nazis and white supremacists. They dress in all black, they wear masks, and they occasionally engage in violence. One the group's tactics and appearance have garnered them a lot of media attention over the past few months. But for a group that's getting so much airtime for being violent and dangerous, they're not causing that much havoc. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. What you just saw there was recent footage of a self-proclaimed militant anti-fascist group known as Antifa assaulting a journalist and an elderly man. Basically, what these pathetic individuals do is dress up in their little costumes that cover their faces and then they go intimidate and usually assault fascists. But it gets tricky because they are so uneducated that anybody to the right of the Rockefeller Republicans is a fascist and therefore deserves to be silenced. They basically do to conservatives exactly what people like Jesse Smollett pretend conservatives do to anybody that isn't a straight white guy. And it's peculiar because considering how well they emulate the behavior of Mussolini's black shirts or Hitler's brown shirts, you'd expect them to be able to know fascism when they see it. But evidently not. You know, this is what happens when a culture breeds pusillanimity, which isn't the proper word for exactly what you'd expect, fun fact. And uh, now you've got these people that have no mountain in their life that is more significant to scale than dressing up in a costume and LARPing that you're part of a modern Warsaw uprising. That's cute. That's cute that you have that little meaning in your life, that little to pursue, that you go out and create problems and then solve them. You guys, you're literally Syndrome from The Incredibles. Remember how he creates like the giant robot and he's got the remote so only he can stop it from destroying the city so that everybody praises him as a hero because he's insecure due to being rejected as a child. Is that what's is that what's wrong, Antifa? Did we make a breakthrough? Look, I'll share some advice, no extra charge. If your problem in life is that you are a little bitch, the solution is not, in fact, to double down and continue being a little bitch. It might be preferable to you if everyone else adjusted to your demands, if everyone accepted you for who you are. But here's the bad news. It's not going to happen. And it's because you're a little bitch and no one likes you except other little bitches. And they don't even like you, right? Like they just like that you won't call them out on their being a little bitch too. So it's not even like a real relationship. It's just a Mexican standoff with the trigger being that you both are enabling each other's little bitchiness. So fix it or don't fix it. Just keep committing felonies, you idiots. You will reap what you sow eventually. These people are terrorists. Like by definition, the definition being a person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims. That's why when the media get mad, they're like, oh, conservatives quick to call Muslims terrorists, but they don't call school shooters terrorists. That's racist because Islam is a race now, I guess. It's like Islamic terrorism is politically motivated. School shootings usually aren't politically motivated, except for the one in Colorado that the media covered for all of 14 seconds because they found out that one of the shooters was transgender and wanted revenge against people that didn't accept transgenderism. So that's arguably politically motivated. So there, I'll concede that's terrorism, but back to... Antifa terrorism, those particular incidents occurred in Portland, and Antifa has been doing things like this for a few years now, but Portland has been particularly bad, and the mayor refuses to do anything about it, even saying that he supports the decision of his police to not get involved, and the media are hesitant to condemn Antifa because Antifa is just achieving their ends in an extreme manner, and one of the core principles of leftism is that the ends justify the means. Whatever it takes, if it's for what they perceive to be the greater good, it's okay. You know, I did a video specifically covering how they justify the violence to themselves that goes in deeper with that, so I'll put a link to it in the description, but this is the same framework of mind that Hitler had, that Stalin had, that Mao had, which is that if there's a goal in mind, the means by which we achieve that goal are irrelevant. All that matters is that we reach our goal. CNN's Chris Cuomo has defended Antifa. Joe Biden describes them as courageous because courage is hiding your face and getting seven or eight other LARPers to help you jump innocent people. These people are bullies and something needs to be done about them. They, they started milkshaking people, which means they throw milkshakes on you because you're a Nazi, because that's exactly what the Bielskis did when they, they saved two, uh, 
1200 they saved 1200 Jews from the Holocaust they just use milkshakes so the problem is you know people started normalizing that including Burger King and so they started doing that thing that they tend to do where they escalate it and now Portland police report that they were adding quick drying cement to their milkshakes and other dangerous chemicals they've even called for acid attacks on an upcoming free speech rally these people are dangerous and they are not going to stop until they are made to stop that's the thing about these types of people as weak and insecure and unsatisfied with their lives as they are you have to understand this is all that they've got why else would they risk going to prison? This is their identity. They are so delusional that they truly believe that they are fighting fascists. And because of that, they will maim you without hesitation. So be careful. Look at the men of Antifa. You know, beta males tend to overcompensate for their lack of masculinity and confidence with aggression, which just makes them look like emotional little bitches. And that's what these people are. And one-on-one, -on -one, I'm confident that anybody could beat the piss out of these people. But when there's 12 of them with bike locks, bricks, crowbars, weighted knuckle gloves, socks filled with padlocks, probably not going to go so well. And so on Saturday evening, a gay Vietnamese journalist was robbed and hospitalized with a brain hemorrhage as a result of Antifa. And people are defending Antifa and claiming that this guy was asking for it because he and the publication for which he works, I guess, haven't depicted Antifa in the brave and heroic displays that they would like. And then, of course, they were also pepper spraying police officers because that's what you do during a peaceful protest. And, you know, they were there to counter protest a demonstration that was raising awareness for male victims of sexual assault. And then Antifa were chasing a, quote, gay man in a sundress down the street when the two men that you saw in the beginning tried to help him and one got his head split open with a crowbar requiring 25 stitches and the other got his face bloodied up. Where were the police? The Vietnamese journalist claims that there were no police in sight, which has led some to speculate that the mayor, Ted Wheeler, ordered the police to stand down from the riot, and Ted Wheeler's office has refused to comment on these accusations. Ted Wheeler is, of course, a Democrat that doesn't believe that, quote, hate speech is protected by the First Amendment. The Supreme Court disagrees, but who cares? Not, not Teddy. They don't care about you. Understand, you are not their friend. They don't buy into American unification, right? So it's not, ah, we disagree. But at the end of the day, we're all American. No, no, no. They reject that. They have a view for the country. And if you stand in the way of that view, it doesn't matter what happens to you. You are a living and breathing obstacle to be removed from the path to achieving their vision. Someone needs to do something about these people because they are bullies. And bullies only respond to action, whether that be legal action or retaliation. These people are committing felony assault and battery, and they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. What are some examples of felony assault and battery? Uh, striking or threatening to strike a person with a dangerous object. Check. Assault or battery resulting in serious physical injury, including permanent disfigurement. It's a check, you know? Threat of violence while concealing one's identity. Check. Assault or battery against a member of a protected class, such as, I don't know, police officers or elderly people. We just saw it on Saturday. Check. These people need to go to prison. And unfortunately, by not enforcing the laws and allowing these people to continue being violent terrorists because you secretly agree with what they're doing, you're going to make the situation much worse because more people are going to get hurt. And inevitably, because these people like to split the heads of people with whom they disagree politically, and those people also happen to be gun enthusiasts, inevitably, they're going to attack the wrong guy and he is going to put holes in them and in Oregon because of precedent they effectively have stand your ground laws so that individual will walk away and no one will be able to blame them because the departed decided that it would be fun to start swinging around crowbars at people in the name of the hashtag resistance nobody wants that nobody wants anybody to get hurt what's the best way to prevent people from getting hurt enforce the laws well well I don't want to enforce the laws because I secretly support Antifa that's fine the courts have affirmed it time and time again. Police officers have no legal obligation to protect you. That is fine by me. I don't want to outsource my right to self-preservation. That is the iron law of nature. You are responsible for your own safety. I am fine with that. So please understand, if you order the police to stand down because you want to allow these terrorists to continue to harm the people of this country, the people of this country will do what we have to do to defend ourselves. Whatever it takes, we will not be intimidated and we will stand our ground. Otherwise, they will continue their terrorism. So if you won't defend your people, that is fine. We will defend ourselves and here's a story this is a true story in seventh grade this kid named brian kept calling me gay like every day in the class that i had with him he'd call me gay and i was really getting sick of it and everyone knew that i wasn't gay so that wasn't the issue the problem i had with it if you really would like to know the problem i had with it was that he was calling me gay as if to insult me which meant that he perceived homosexuality to be bad and he was then forwarding his own bigotry onto me every day and that just was not going to fly so i decided that i was going to kick this kid's teeth in in front of the whole class so the next time he called me gay i went after him he backed away his friend stepped in between us and so you know didn't happen but guess who never used gay as an insult again Brian, it's a true story. Because bullies are insecure and weak people that like to feel powerful by attacking others. I saw it in middle school with Brian the Bigot. I see it now with Antifa. And it's not going to stop until action is taken by law enforcement. But if action isn't taken by law enforcement, people will defend themselves. And the reply is always, Antifa's fringe. They haven't killed anybody. Hey, what about Charlottesville? The neo-Nazis killed somebody in Charlottesville. Correct. 
And that man has rightfully been sentenced to life in prison because we're supposed to enforce laws in this country. But let's be honest, Charlottesville, which happened almost two years ago, is your boogeyman. Antifa attacks happen on a regular basis and the response is always, oh, but what about Charlottesville? That's a whataboutism, my friend. It's illogical. You aren't addressing the problem, you are redirecting it. And if you think that countless assaults and mob beatings are okay just as long as no one is killed, I'd like to call your morality that allows you to pull the but what about Charlottesville card into question. Because it appears that your problem isn't that people are being maimed or even killed, it's that people are being maimed or even killed that you have yet to baselessly declare to be fascists. Obviously, Charlottesville was awful. Nobody disputes that. But you aren't allowed to selectively condemn violence against innocent people. Either all of it is wrong or none of it is wrong. We also shouldn't selectively apply the law to some people, but not others, because they happen to be fighting for a cause that we happen to support. How long do you actually think it will take before Antifa kills somebody? I honestly... I think the only reason they haven't killed anybody yet with their crowbars and bike locks is because they're a bunch of weak soy drinking cucks, but even hitting somebody in the face could kill them. You know, what if their head smacks on the cement? Many people have died that way before, and many people have been charged with murder for what was supposed to just be a fist fight because that happens. We don't want that. Nobody wants that. Actually, Antifa seems to want that. So what's the solution? Enforce our laws, arrest them, sentence them, boom, problem solved. Their sole purpose is literally to intimidate and assault people. These people are terrorists. And you know what? Talk about poetic justice. When these people go to prison for attempted murder and all their other fun activities, guess who they'll get to meet? Actual neo-Nazis. And then 10 or so years later, when they're done, maybe they'll be a bit more sympathetic towards the protest that happened on Saturday for male victims of sexual assault. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, then subscribe to the channel by clicking my face if you haven't done so already. And then finally, leave a comment with your thoughts. We are changing it up this time. And Brian, I am, if you're watching this video for whatever reason, I am sorry that I outed you as a homophobe, but you know what? I was telling hashtag my truth. So hashtag times up, Brian. Sorry, but thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.